Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, today I'm going to be looking at a radio that was sent in to me to play around with and possibly do a review of. And what we're going to be looking at is this little guy right here. Now this is a uh, uh, RS918 clone by a company called Recent over in China. And uh, Recent is uh, the radio division of the Quanzhou Ryzen Electronics Company. Um, they're a, uh, a Chinese company that makes a lot of uh, portable radios, handheld radios, um, DMR radios, and uh, now apparently are getting into HF with this little uh, RS, well they call it 978, well, that's must, that must be a newer model. But they also had this 918. Um, and uh, there's a lot of videos out there reviewing this radio already. It's been out for a couple of years. Um, there's demonstration videos, review videos. And I thought, I, I, I want a different angle. I want to approach this differently. And I have the perfect angle to approach it from. What is this thing? Well, we'll look, we'll look a little closer at it here in a moment. Uh, but basically, this is recent clone of Alluance's RS918. This is Alluance, another fairly new um, Chinese radio manufacturer that mostly makes commercial radios and they're trying to get into the ham radio market. They have a DMR handheld and now this RS918. Um, but they didn't design it either. It's a clone of an open source project called the MCHF. So let's take a closer look at the radio first off, and then we'll uh, we'll follow the breadcrumbs back, and we'll take a look at the actual wonderful, amazing open source project that this is based on. So this is the little RS918 clone made by Recent Electronics, Chinese company. It is a clone of the almost identical radio made by Alluance. Um, the package itself is fairly small, as you can see from my hands. It's, it's not too heavy. I'd say it's about as heavy as the Yaesu FT8117, maybe just a little bit heavier. It's a solid steel enclosure. I mean, you really can't knock the construction quality of the enclosure. Up on the top or back of the radio here, there's a metal plate that acts like a heat sink. And you can tell that the voltage regulator is over in this area, because when it's just on and operating, this gets pretty warm. Not too hot, but pretty warm. Over here is definitely the finals. Uh, this area gets really hot. If you run this thing at 5 watts doing a digital mode, um, FT8, PSK31, or whatever, this will get hot enough to almost burn your fingertips. Um, if you're going to run higher duty cycle modes, like digital modes and all that, you probably would want to get an aftermarket heat sink to put on here that gives it some real heat sinking capability, because that gets hot. I run digital modes at 2 watts, and this still gets pretty warm. But at 5 watts, it actually almost burned me after just calling a CQ with PSK. So that's what's, that's what's up here on the back. Connectivity on the sides, um, I took some pictures. But we've got an antenna port and two USB ports on this side. The regular USB port here is for doing firmware updates, and apparently they're going to incorporate a keyboard in the uh, upcoming firmware to allow you to send digital modes directly from the radio with a USB keyboard. That'll be cool. And then there's a micro USB port over here, and that provides uh, one of the big rig features I really like. Um, when you plug this into your computer, you get a sound card and a serial port. The sound card is for sending audio to and from the radio for digital modes, and the serial port's for rig control using the FT-817's command set. So you tell your uh, software that you're using an FT-817 and rig control works um, there. Over on this side, we have far more ports. Uh, we've got a headphone port, a microphone port, line in and line out for audio, so there's yet another way to interface it with a device. An accessory port and a key port. And these are all uh, 1 8 um, jacks. 
Uh, yeah, stereo jacks. The uh, headphone is a stereo output, um, so you get both. But it's a mono. It's a mono signal, but it's on a stereo jack. So uh, yeah, you don't really get stereo out of it. Anyway. The radio itself, front panel, is very minimal. I like that. Um, the original MCHF, I think, had a few more buttons, but it's pretty much the same design. Uh, nice color touchscreen. When we turn it on, we'll see a firmware um, shot that'll show that this is actually running the firmware developed for the MCHF open source project. And there it is. I'll snapshot that screen and uh, show you where it says MCHF right there. Okay. Um, uh, special event station, 14250. The audio's decent. Um, the user interface is pretty well laid out, pretty easy to follow. These buttons have indicators that show what they're for. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to get too deep into actually using this radio because there are many, many review videos out there that, that go through it. Uh, a quick search and you'll see people going through all these different functions and all that. I'm just going to give you an overview. It has a lot of big rig features. It has the waterfall and the pan adapter here, spectrum display, which is extremely useful for finding signals on the band when you're tuning around. Um, you've got your meters up here, and they are, de they are definable. Uh, there's an S meter, and right now it's indicating SWR. But it's a touch screen. I just touched it, and now it says audio. It would show my audio levels. ALC, and back to SWR. So yeah, it's actually a touch screen on this thing. So you get a full color touch screen. You get a pan adapter. You get DSP. Um, it has a DSP function in here for noise reduction uh, and filtering. And the filters are completely adjustable from I think as wide as 10K down to 100 hertz for CW. Uh, you can really, really define the filters. And then uh, the rest of the controls, they're, they're multi-purpose controls. Um, you've got some buttons for common functions. And then uh, these controls can do other things like control pitch, uh, the equalization, ALC speed, AGC level. Um, audio level, RF gain, squelch, you know, all those all those functions are there. The menu system, when you're in the menu, uh, these two knobs control the menu. They're all hidden by default. Each of the menus is hidden, and this knob will show a menu, and then this knob will let you move through it, and then you can change something in the menu by using this knob. So I could, like, turn it off, sync AM, synchronous AM mode, turn it back on, turn it off, see. And then I could hide that menu when I'm done with it and move on to the other menus that I want to play with. One gotcha, by the way, that I will talk about, because it took me a while to figure it out. It's, it's buried in the documentation. If you want to do digital modes with this, um, there's a microphone input here, and usually you're on mic. But if you want to do digital modes, you need to manually change that input. They used to have a mode that was... Um, digital upper and digital lower sideband, and this firmware doesn't have that. I don't know why. Modes, when you cycle through, it's in single sideband, CW, AM, synchronous AM, with a 10K filter. Another instance of AM, synchronous AM, with a 10K filter. I don't see any difference between those two. And then FM, and then uh, we're back to uh, single sideband. So... They don't have a digital mode here to choose from. If you want to do digital modes, you have to go into the menu, and it's under the touch screen via menu, whatever that means. We'll show that. And the second item down is mic line select. Right now I've got it on digital. The options are digital IQ, digital, which is using the audio from the USB port over on this side, Line in right, line in left for the two line inputs over here, or for the line input over here, or microphone. So you actually have to come in here and change that from mic to digital in order for it to accept audio from the USB port over here for modulating. So that's a little gotcha. It took me a while to find that. It's buried in the documentation, but that's what you have to do. And that's the only thing I'm going to talk about with operating the radio. Like I said, plenty of videos out there on operating the radio. What I want to talk about is, I want to talk about a lineage, okay? This is a clone. 
um, made by Recent, and it's a clone of an Alluance uh, radio, which looks identical to this, but is also a clone. And they are both clones of the MCHF project. Let's go over to the computer and let's take a look at the source project that these are based on. This is the uh, website of Recent that made this particular radio and we're in the wireless devices section of their site and uh, as we can see they make a lot of mobiles probably DMR or uh, uh, family service family radio service well I guess that would be domestic so no it'd be DMR I bet um, this looks like a mobile phone or an mp3 player there is their clone of the 918 they're now calling it the RS 978 but mostly uh, a lot of handhelds, a lot of handhelds, uh, DMR radios, and uh, oh, there's the RS-918. Here we go. There it is. So the other one must be a more advanced model, probably based on the more current hardware over on uh, the MCHF site. They've got a linear amplifier here, 150 watt linear amp. Uh, these are definitely DMR radios or PMR, commercial radios. So yeah, that's recent. They make a or they make, they manufacture a lot of these that are probably not designed by them. <laughs> Just guessing. But anyway, theirs is a clone of the Alluance HS1. <laughs> or this is Alluance's clone of the RS918, and there's yet another cloner out there that I haven't found yet. <laughs> Alluance is a fairly young company. Um, they have, I think, just, uh, yeah, just the two products right now. A handheld and uh, this guy. So yeah, their other product is this uh, DMR handheld. But both of these are clones of the MCHF QRP transceiver. Now this is a project started by uh, Chris M0NKA, I believe that's his name. Uh, started way back in uh, 2013, I think, December of 2013 was when he started uh, producing this thing. You, you can see they've got all the blog entries here. And if we go all the way back to December 2013, um, we'll see this is where he is first building pieces and parts to mount things together on. Um, shows his antennas. I think there was another thing in here where he talks about the filters, his, his designs for the case over here. You know, so way back in December of 2013 is when this project was started. And currently, it's it's quite phenomenal. Um, it's a full HF SDR, Software Defined Radio, transceiver with all the big rig features that you'd see in more modern commercial rigs, like the spectrum scope, you know, and, and a touch screen. Uh, DSP filtering and um, processing for noise reduction and such. I mean, it's it's extremely ambitious, um, this project. And uh, there is something I want to point out. Right at the very top of the page, we see this site is the home of the MCHF QRP transceiver. It's a small homebrewed amateur radio project. Firmware is released as open source and most project files are released as well. With the only restriction of not commercial use, i.e. manufacturing and sales of kits or complete product. So he is forbidding companies to take this design and make a commercial product out of it. Pretty much exactly what Alluance has done here and what Recent has done um, with their clone of it. So both Recent and Alluance have, have gone directly against Chris's demands on his original project. They're both making a commercial product out of this open source project. Um, I, I don't like that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, I, I guess a neat little hardware package but it's not what they want. They, it's not what they're allowing here. I mean, that's pretty, pretty straightforward, you know. So uh, I'm not going to concentrate on the actual hardware that Arthur sent me. Thanks again, Arthur. 
But I'm going to look more at, at this original project here, the MCHF. Um, I mean, what you get in this is is just as good as commercial radios. You know, it's the performance is great. Um, SDR features are great. The built-in interfacing is smart. The USB sound card and serial port are smart. Um, and he's still developing it. He's up to uh, working on version 0.8 of the build. Here's a gallery of his uh, more current um, work on the thing. You can see the PC boards that he's designed or have, or the team has designed. There's actually quite a team involved with this. Um, but very nicely done PC boards. Surface mount stuff, you know, I mean, it's it looks like it's all really well laid out. I like the way that he did this on the PC board where he actually separated sections and he labeled it. This is the power amplifier. This is the transmit preamp over here. Um, that's kind of cool. <laughs> it's, it's a neat project. Another photo of the assembly going together. There's the speaker, there's the display, and the buttons for the different menus are all on this front panel board. And finally, here is a really nice block diagram of the actual radio itself. Um, pretty well laid out, pretty easy to follow. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, but really ambitious when you think about it. The software alone that's being written for this DSP and CPU, that's, that's a whole project in and of itself, you know. And then the hardware design and layout and the manufacturing. It's, this is really quite an ambitious project. I, I know I've said that a couple of times, but I'm just really impressed by the MCHF. So, yeah. Uh, this is worthwhile. This is worth looking into. This might be even worth buying if you can do the kits. What's, what does he sell the MCHF for? Let's look at the order page. MCHF kit. Uh, PC boards, components, display, no enclosure, pre-assembled user interface board, pre-assembled RF board, two bags with post-assembly parts, looks like push buttons and switches and things and wiring. Uh, so yeah, price, 236.82 GBP, is that pounds? Uh, yeah, I think that's pounds. So convert that to your uh, currency of choice to see how much it costs for you. And uh, maybe consider buying the kit. Now here's a kit with a metal case. It's going to be more expensive. Yeah, 292 Well, that's not too much more, is it? Yeah, I guess. Uh, knobs. Um, so yeah, you could buy the kit bare bones here and provide your own enclosure. You can buy the kit with a nice metal case, all silk screened and labeled, uh, in stock too. So that is the MCHF kit. Okay, this is a Whiskey and Three Whiskey Special Event Station, QRZ. Kilo, Whiskey 7, and Kilo, Okay, so now that we've seen the lineage and we know that uh, this is kind of a ripoff of a ripoff of an open source project that forbade commercial products being made from it so <laughs> it's kind of dubious isn't it um, but it does work uh, I used I've used this quite a bit I've played with digital on it and I've uh, had a few QSOs um, here's some uh, video I went out the other morning before it got hot and set up the uh, chameleon magnetic loop and I used the little radio to check into the early bird's net. Here is Kilo Bravo 9R, Romeo Lima Whiskey Portable 7. Roger, roger, this is uh, Kilo Bravo Niner, Romeo Lima Whiskey, Portable 7 in the desert outside of Kingman, Arizona. Uh, I'm outside today, outside, uh, running 10 watts into a magnetic loop. 10 watts into a magnetic loop. So uh, I'm just glad everybody can hear me, or anybody can hear me. Uh, over. Yeah, roger, roger, you're early morning today with Utah today, and no 
Negative, negative. Just, uh, just testing out this magnetic loop in this RS918 clone this morning. So I'm, I'm glad I was able to get through. Uh, 73, everybody, have a good day. This is KB9 RLW, stroke 7. Hi, Roger, Roger, Kevin. As always, a pleasure, my friend. And uh, glad uh, you made it in for sure. We got you on the payroll. And uh, uh, that last uh, go around, you were up just a little bit on the SCR, so I could uh, stick it out a little bit better. So that's my take on the uh, RS918 clone. Um, I really can't recommend the radio uh, just because of the case of what it is. You know, it's a clone of a clone of an open source project that specifically forbade the creation of and selling of commercial products based on that 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 project. You know, I, Chris was very specific as we saw in that paragraph. You cannot do this, and this is what they're doing. So. Being an open source advocate, I really cannot recommend buying this radio, um, at least not in good faith. But that's, you know, that's my opinion. Uh, I understand that, that the original is a kit, the MCHF is a kit, and there's a lot of people out there that might like to have a small portable radio with these stellar features, these big rig features, you know, um, the, the, the spectrum scope in and of itself is, a, is such a valuable tool when you're tuning around on the bands. Uh, you know, so I get it that, that there's probably some people out there that, that really can't build kits, you know, they, they uh, might have unsteady hands or be older or their eyesight is weak and, and they just, they, they know that they can't reliably build kits and they want something like this and they might choose to buy um, the RS918 from Alluance or Recent. Uh, and I, I get that. But for me, personally, um, I really can't recommend it. Now, Arthur, uh, the uh, ham that donated this radio for, these, for this video, and uh, thanks again, Arthur, by the way. Greatly appreciate it. It's been fun. And, um, I, you know, honestly, I'll probably use it a little bit occasionally here and there um, just to play around with. Uh, but uh, in talking to him about my angle on this video, uh, he pretty much agreed. He said, you know, he's, he's got open source projects of his own that are out there, you know, and... Uh, I think what he said to me was that if he had known about the conflict of interest there, he might not have bought the radio initially himself. You know, so he was uh, pretty much on the same page. So anyway, um, that said, like I said, that's just my opinion. You know, take it with a grain of salt. But uh, that's the look at the uh, uh, recent clone of the Alluance clone of the MCHF. Props to Chris and his team, by the way. I probably have already said it a couple of times, but that MCHF is one heck of a project. That's incredibly ambitious, incredibly well executed, phenomenal, phenomenal kit project um, for a ham to produce. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. You guys rock. Your whole team, the guys that did the DSP software and all the other software, wow. You guys rock. All right. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.